shootout. So I'm going to try to keep things consistent today, but I don't know what my problem is, but I struggle with the fact that I have a whole bunch of trumpets and a whole bunch of flugelhorns, and I can't really decide which one I like. And I guess you don't have to, or like best, and I guess you don't have to do that, but I thought it would be cool to uh, let any of you take a listen and see what you think. Um, here we go. So this is my pride and joy. This is a Shilky uh, raw brass finish. Flute horn. It's their 1040 FL. This is quite a horn. I mean, in every possible way, this thing is just gorgeous. The fit and finish just feels like, you know, <laughs> it's amazing. It's a wonderful horn. But I honestly, I have a lot of intonation issues with it. I don't know if that's me. Uh, I can't imagine it's the horn, so I'm going to imagine it's me. Um, and this just could be too much horn for a guy like me. So I don't know. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, each of the horns I'm going to use today are going to use a Dennis Wick for BFL uh, so that we have no variety in uh, tonal change from the mouthpiece itself. It'll only be the horn. But I think it's interesting because I really think that the horns that I've been playing, this one included, um, you know, I have some some affordable horns that are four or five hundred bucks. And this is a little over three thousand for one of these new. And again, worth every penny. I've said this a million times. This thing is by far the coolest flugelhorn I've ever seen or owned. I mean, it's just the epitome of quality. I mean, it's so hard to see all the details, but you can see like all through here, there's the line, the seam for the for the bell. I mean, it's just, I don't even know they how they got it to do this. It's not scratched, but it's aged. I mean, this is only three years old. This horn's from 2017, but wow. Uh, the only things that I've changed are underneath the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, underneath, see the felt? Um, for whatever reason, I bought this used from uh, Jay Landis Brass. Th that wasn't there, so I added those from Shilky. And then these are these here are actually the, the same heavy uh, heavy caps that are on my John Faddis F, uh, S43 horn uh, trumpet. So <clears throat> I added a little extra mass because th this horn is just, man, I mean, there's just... It's a work of art. Anyway, let me stop gushing about that. Pull out another one here. So I talked about this one the other day. This is the Blessing. And I think I'd know the name of the, the number by now on this thing. Uh, 1541 RT. And with the suffix S meaning, I guess, satin. So this is a brushed or satin silver. I can't imagine that's real abalone, but maybe. Uh flugel. Pretty similar to the Shilky in terms of its design. I mean, I, it's, I can't really put them together without potentially bonking them, so I'm not going to do that, but um, it's very similar in bore. I think there's only, like, it's, it's, it's very, just a couple of numbers off in terms of the bore size. Um, it's got what I, I've, I've mentioned before, I really like this bumper. <laughs> so if you, you bonk that like I did on my raw brass trumpet horn, oh, I wouldn't have a dent there. Um, so I might actually send that one back to Ben and see if he can put a, a little bumper on the back of my trumpet for me <laughs> uh, and take the dent out. Uh, but anyway, this this is a really cool, you know, and it's got the, the shiny, shiny bell on the inside. But this is a really cool horn as well. Um, I'm probably going to get some felt uh, under pads for the, the valves as well because, I mean, these are fine, but it just makes everything quieter for me. Um, you know, a really noticeable thing on this is the, uh, well, you can hear the compression. It's it's really good. But this third valve, man, that thing is like feather. It's really, really well done. You can pinky it. But hear it? That's good compression. I mean, it's not the Shilky, but it's good. It's really, this is a, you know, I mean, this is a good horn. I like this one quite a bit. So what I'm going to do now... Uh, and maybe I'll even demo one more. Hang on one sec. So this one is, uh, this is kind of my favorite horn, believe it or not. So the Blessing I got for a little over 600 bucks. The Shilky uh, I, I got for 2400 um, And this Toman was just a little bit over 400 This is the uh, FH900J. And quite honestly, I'm almost certain that this is probably made in the exact same factory that the Blessing is made because they 
there's just a lot of similarities to it just the way everything is done the the, in, the, the inside of the valves the, the, everything i mean this one is real this is their jazz version so it's got these really cool big bottom pieces on the you know the bottom of the valves um, it also has a really nice this probably has the most ergonomic uh, trigger it's just it, it's not too curved like the blessing is a little more curved this one's less curved um, not quite as compressiony and it, it it sounds a little bit lighter but nonetheless and this doesn't come scratched like this I did that it comes like this in just raw brass um, I wouldn't recommend screwing around with finishes like this on really expensive horns but on a $400 horn I mean you're not gonna ruin it and it's really cool but it's kind of hard to see but see all these discolorations this is just the what natural brass will do when it has nothing on it but unfortunately on this particular model they leave out the uh, on their 1000 series which I'm considering getting one of those as well then they have the uh, the brace bumper here that I really do like but this is a really cool horn too this this one is on a lot of my recordings I play it all the time it is more of the Yamaha build I don't know if you can notice but like so this on the the Shilke and uh, the Blessing are wider and probably shorter uh, to make up the difference in tubing and there's a bigger gap here so I like to play the horn not traditionally with my thumb here like you normally would on a trumpet I like to ram it all the way through and hold it like this and uh, but the nice thing about this is these big pieces down here give you a nicer like the other ones end right here right so you're kind of holding nothing or you're holding down here uh, or you're kind of all over the place but on here this one gives you a lot of substance or a lot of mass to hang on to at the bottom so it's it's a little tighter in here and over here by my thumb but I really I really like it um, and again this is a really great sounding horn uh, it's it plays wonderfully in tune uh, and I've used it on several recordings because of that as I mentioned I'm having a little little bit of difficulty with the Shilke so this one definitely uh, has a different kind of I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for it has a better uh, gives me more confidence to play it without uh, having to worry about missing the notes and going back a, a thousand times and redoing a part because I you know I've said before I'm kind of from that Miles Davis school approach of just play it once when it feels right but if I still kind of get stuck between that and uh, flubbing notes <laughs> so let's do all three of these we'll use the same Dennis Wick for BFL mouthpiece and I'm gonna play the same uh, same little line and then we'll have a good comparison of all three Just for the heck of it, <clears throat> I'm going to play this Bach 2FL that I play uh, all the time. This is what I use in the Shilke uh, horn. So just to give you a difference, uh, an idea of the difference between mouthpieces and how vast it can be, this thing's, I don't know if it'll translate as well, but to me it sounds totally different. 